Hello everyone, happy Monday. My name is Bev McCullough of Flamingo Toes and I'm very excited to be here with you guys on this gorgeous Monday. It's super lovely here. We have had rain over the last week. I think they're supposed to get rain here over the next week and it's just beautiful. My soybeans are growing and so now our field looks all green and pretty instead of uh, brown and not so pretty. So. I'm just having a good time. I saw that some of y'all are having weather though, so I hope you guys are uh, staying safe and that your storms pass over quickly with no problems. So, I am very happy to see you all today. We are sewing through my Spooky Lane quilt together. That is the quilt that's behind me here on the wall. We're taking a row at a time, and this is our first week of sewing. Last week was our kickoff, and this week we are diving right into that first row. It's a row quilt and all that means is that the blocks are kind of formed in rows. <laughs> it's super like common sense, right? <laughs> um, so we're starting at the top and working our way down and we are doing our moon and star blocks this week. So this is a super fun quilt. Even if you haven't ever done a picture quilt or you're new to quilting, I'm gonna walk you guys through it step by step so that you'll feel successful and and super happy with your quilts when you're done. And the beautiful thing is we will be finishing up mid-September-ish. I can't remember the exact date. We'll look at the cal at the schedule here in a little bit, but we will have it done mid-September and you guys will have time to get them quilted. I mean, hopefully everybody's <laughs> schedules are crazy, I'm sure, but you'll have a quilt before um, October if you have time to get it quilted. So. It's gonna be really fun and super perfect for the holiday season. So I just have to say, I was standing here waiting for us to start and um, you know, getting ready and everything and seeing all your comments come through before the video even started, I was getting a little choked up and I'll confess to you guys, I am, um, I get choked up at the drop of a hat. <laughs> It does not take anything hardly to make me cry. But I was just really loving all of your comments. I so appreciate our community and just seeing everybody pop on before the video even started and say hi and where they were from just made my day. <laughs> so thank you guys for that. I really appreciate it. Let's see who's here. We have um, lots of fun folks here. We started with Linda, who was in a tornado warning, so she won't be joining. I hope you're okay, Linda. Uh, Therese is here. Terry, Karen. Lindy's here. <laughs> She's excited she got here on time. Yay, Lindy. <laughs> Lori's here. Connie, she had storms last night. Oh, goodness, and you're in the campground. Well, thanks for coming from the campground, Connie. So fun. Judy's here. Deneen, hey, Deneen. Tawny's here from Oregon. Ingrid. From Cambridge, Canada, lovely. Dawn's here, perfect weather there too, nice. Pam, Val, Pamela, oh, I'm so glad you guys are here. Susan's here from Maine. Betsy's here from Northern Virginia, great to be on this live. I'm so glad you're here, Betsy. <laughs> Christine is excited about the quilt, yay! I'm so glad you're excited, Christine. Wendy's here, Bambi's here from sunny LA, that sounds gorgeous, Bambi, love it. Shyla's here from Indiana. She's ready to sew. She's got her Halloween emojis going. <laughs> and Wanda's here. Deborah, Patsy, yay! Patty, sorry, I said Patsy, but Patty's here. There might be a Patsy here. I don't know. <laughs> Patty was the comment. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are here, and I'm super excited to sew with you. We have had a lot of fun things going on on the blog. Um, we, um, let's see, what are we doing? I am sewing along with the Evergreen Mystery Quilt that is Fat Quarter Shop's Christmas, Summer, Christmas in July Mystery Quilt Along. I can't show you the star on the quilt because it's finished. <laughs> um, I had to get mine done early because we, uh, we are posting tomorrow um, the final layout and everything. So um, you'll have to come to the blog tomorrow to see the final quilt, but I've been showing you guys my steps each week 
and it's been so fun. I'm really loving how it turned out. It's super cute. I love the fabric that I used and I've got all the information for that and I'll have my big reveal tomorrow. And um, Addie, Adelaide even got into her first uh, quilt modeling session. <laughs> I laid down the quilt to take photos on the floor and boom, she was right there on it. I was like, okay, you're learning your job. Good job. <laughs> so I was excited about that. There's, I'm not going to like inundate you guys with cat photos, but I will include just one super cute baby kitty photo on the quilt. It's always really cute. So I'm going to have that for you guys tomorrow on the blog. So make sure you tune in tomorrow. I am going to Texas tomorrow. I am going to visit... Stitch in Heaven, which is a fabulous shop in Texas, and they, of course, are a regular quilt shop, but they also do a bunch of quilty travel things. They have retreats, and then they have, like, events where they go to different areas, and they take, you know, travel um, quilters on travel things, and then they also do quilty cruises. I'm doing a quilt cruise with them in March. I'm super excited about that with Amanda Niederhauser, Jedi Craft Girl, so we're doing that in March. Um, and so I am going there tomorrow, so I will definitely share some photos with you guys in my Instagram stories and um, all kinds of fun updates about our group. We'll, I'll be there. The retreat starts Wednesday and goes through, we leave Sunday. So it's a nice long retreat and I'm teaching my Meadowland quilt, which we just did a sew along on. And I think it's such a fun quilt for a retreat because we'll be able to take each step over the four days and um, it's really going to be fun and hopefully everyone will make a really good head start on their quilts and have not a whole lot to finish up when they get home. <laughs> That's always like the the quandary when you get home and you're super excited about your retreat quilts but then you're like oh I have to finish this now <laughs> now that life's back to normal so I'm super excited about that it's going to be really fun so I will be on the road tomorrow driving to Texas so if you all um, think of me, I would appreciate that. Um, let's see. I think those are the only um, like blog related things. Um, our video next week, I'll be home next week. So everything will be um, normal next week. So that'll be good. Um, I did make up for those of you that are sewing the Spooky Lane quilt and you want to make it exactly as shown on the pattern, I made up a cutting swatch like a cutting guide so it shows you like row one these are the blocks these are the fabrics that you're going to use I made up one of those for Meadowland and you guys seem to like that so I did that for you guys today I have it linked in today's blog post um, and I also have it linked in today's video description if you want to head straight there it's just a PDF you can download and print it out if you want to sew yours exactly as shown on the pattern. Um, you can also use it kind of as a guide if you're not sewing with Haunted Adventures so you know, okay, kind of plan out like I'm going to need this many fabrics for this row, this many fabrics for that row, that kind of thing. So that is in today's video description if you guys wanna check that out. Sherry says um, that she got her fabric yesterday, yay! And Dawn says kittens love quilts, that they do. <laughs> Deborah says Mufasa gives cat modeling lessons. Mufasa is Amanda Niederhauser's cat, and he is very much the star of her Instagram <laughs> feed. Um, Addie will be occasionally visiting, but not going to overtake like Mufasa does. <laughs> Pamela says she's mixing up her fabric from her stash to show Spooky Lane. All house even stitched. Oh, that's going to be beautiful, Pamela. I love it. Oh, you guys love kitty photos. Yay! Oh, Susan says she's going on the quilt cruise too. She's already signed up. Susan, yay, I'm so excited. We are going to have a very good time. <laughs> it's going to be a blast. Karen likes the pumpkin pillow. Oh, and th Susan says, have a safe trip to Texas. Thank you. All right, so my pumpkin pillow is um, part two of the pillow I showed last week. So last week's pillow is... Um, was it's part of the set and it was made up of four cute fall leaves and this one is the little pumpkin pillow with a fall leaf in the center these are going to be free patterns from riley blake designs that will and i have video um i recorded a video in may at their for their youtube channel and that is coming out at the end of august i'll make sure to share when that is live so i'm really excited for you guys to see those they're fun scrappy 
pillows to make. So they're perfect for using up your stash if you have fabric left over from these uh, Spooky Lane Sew Along or if you just have Halloween fabric that you wanna use. Um, they're really, really fun to sew and I'll have those as free patterns in just a few weeks. So yay for that. <laughs> I showed you, if you guys, if you didn't check out last week's video, you can see the other one in the set that is the leaves um, last, if you go to last week's video. So let's talk about giveaways. Every week I have a giveaway for you guys. It's my way of saying thank you so much for being so awesome. I have the best community around. <laughs> I firmly believe that. And it's just my way of saying thank you guys. So last week to kick off our so long, I have um, for the giveaway, I have a copy of Spooky Lane. This is the pattern that we're sewing up. If you already have Spooky Lane, you may pick any other fat pattern in my shop. I have da -da, a fat quarter bundle of Haunted Adventure. This is my Halloween collection that's in stores right now and um, I am sewing with Haunted Adventure, and you're welcome to sew with Haunted Adventure, I would love that, but of course, it was with all my sew-alongs, you can sew with anything you like. So this quilt um, takes a fat quarter bundle, and it doesn't use all of the fat quarter bundle, but having a fat quarter bundle gives you lots of variety in your blocks and um, lots of colors and lots of just fun colorfulness to the quilt. So. I also have my two new needle minders for you guys that I made for Halloween. These are the new needle minders. There is a cute little haunted camper and then a skeleton flamingo. Both are cute elements in Haunted Adventure. So that is the prize from last week and our winner is Sherry Rogers 5164. So Sherry, Sherry, you can't see that. <laughs> Let's see if we can see it there. There we go, Sherry Rogers, 5164, commented. Um, I don't believe during the live, I think it was after. Um, so if you are Sherry, send me an email, bev at flamingotoes.com, and I will send out your prize to you um, next week. <laughs> I won't be here after today, so your prize will go out the following week. So thank you so much for tuning in, Sherry. And um, again, bev at flamingotoes.com, send me your email address, Oh no, don't send me your email, send me your mailing address, though you can send me your email if you'd like. <laughs> so this week I wanted to um, do a little more Haunted Adventure because I'm super excited about this brand new, um, these fabrics that are in stores now, and I love Halloween collections, so I was so excited to have a Halloween collection this year. So I thought I would do a 10 inch stacker, because you can do so much with a 10 inch stacker. This is a 10 inch stacker of Haunted Adventure, here you can really see the cute colors and prints in the collection. So this is a fun 10 inch stacker. And I have the other two patterns that I designed to go with this collection. So one is called Fall in Love and it is um, really cute falling leaves and hearts and pinwheels with a little row of pumpkins at the bottom and it is on a dark background which I love it looks very cute on a light background as well but I thought it was just really fun especially for Halloween or just anytime it just to change things up and and have a dark background quilt and then the other one is called apple cider and this is a cute quilt that looks great in any fabric collection so it's fun for Halloween prints, but it looks so cute in anything. One of my testers made up this quilt in patriotic fabrics and it looked darling, you guys. It was so, so cute. So this is a great intro to Dresden. There's, um, well, I'm gonna switch to my other camera here. And you can see the quilt here. So um, apple cider is this quilt that's here. It is made up of cute star blocks and then also some Dresden blocks. And it is a good intro into Dresdens. You guys know that I love partial Dresdens or a quarter, anything really. I like whole Dresdens too, but it's really fun. And a, a quarter or partial Dresden is a great intro into a Dresden because you don't have to match anything up at the end um, and have it lay flat. So a quarter Dresden is super great. Even if you've never done it before, it's a really fun pattern. And I'm actually teaching that quilt pattern at Garden of Quilts this year. Garden of Quilts is Riley Blake's um, big quilt festival that's held every year in September. 
and there is a huge quilt show in these botanical gardens. Um, I think it's Ashton, Ashton Gardens. Am I saying that right? Ashton Gardens in um, Lehigh. No, not Lehigh. Somebody help me out here. It's near Alpine. <laughs> I should have all this prepped. Um, so it's um, every year in September, mid-September, and there's classes, there's nighttime events, there's uh, lectures, they're shopping. It's so amazing, you guys. It's my favorite event every year. And apple cider is one of the quilt classes that I'm going to be teaching. So we're going to get you all familiar with Dresden's and we're going to put that, at least the center portion of the quilt together in the class. So it's going to be really, really fun. So back to the giveaway. Um, our giveaway this week is the 10 inch stacker of Haunted Adventure and then the Fall in Love and apple cider quilt patterns. So if you would like to enter to win, all you have to do is leave a comment on the video um, and you can do that live or later in the week. I pick just before the next week's video, I pick the winner from a random, um, just I pick the winner at random and then I announce the winner the following week. So you make sure that if you commented this week that you check back next week to see if you were the winner. So I hope you guys like this week's giveaway. We're all about the haunted adventure this, this time of year. <laughs> so those are our giveaways this week. Um, let's see, Wanda asked if um, I had a pumpkin needle minder. I do, Wanda. You can check out my shop listing, um, my shop link. It's in the video description. It is a very cute little pumpkin and it's got flowers on the bottom and little vines that go up the side. So it is so fun. Oh, I'm glad you guys like the patterns and the fabrics. Yay! Thanks so much, everyone. Judy, Teresa. Tony asked if I was going to have a sewing tutorial for the Fall in Love quilt. Eventually. My goal eventually is to have tutorials for all of my patterns. Um, I won't have it before, um, obviously, before Halloween this year because we're going to finish this one in September and then um, things kind of get a little bit crazy with a couple events that I have. But yes, I will eventually have a sewing tutorial for Fall in Love. And it's a really fun quilt to make, Tony. Betsy said, looks like scarecrows. What looks like scarecrows? Oh, the, the, um, the quilt does? That's awesome. I'm so glad you guys like Haunted Adventure. Thank you guys. Okay, are you guys ready to sew? I'm ready to sew. Let's dive in. The, um, the moon and stars blocks are very fun to make. The moon is super simple. It's, I used the uh, gray little um, skeleton print for that. Let's look at these on the overhead camera so I don't have to hold up my arms. <laughs> so here is the cute moon. Now I did my moon gray because I think of it that way, but if you want to make your moon yellow or something else, please feel free to get creative. Of course, you know, if you change anything on the, like the fabric guide, you might have to change something later on, but it's your quilt, so that's totally fine. You can definitely do that. So these are the cute little, um, this is the print that has the little skeleton flamingos on it. Isn't that so fun? <laughs> so these are, this is our moon block. It's very simple. And then these are our star blocks. You're going to make four star blocks. And I used the diagonal stripe for the star points on these. And then I fussy cut some campers for each of the stars. So on that cutting guide, it tells you which fabrics to use for what. Um, but definitely feel free to get creative if you would like. You can also, um, you know, do any kind of applique. This is a nice big open block if you want to get super creative. <laughs> it's your quilt, so feel free. <laughs> uh, Betsy, this is, we uh, are using a fat quarter bundle. It does not use every bit of a fat quarter bundle. I have 24 prints in this fat quarter bundle. So I used the whole bundle to give my quilt variety, but you can get away with less than that. Um... If you have a 10 inch stacker and you want to supplement with some fabrics, that's a good idea too. So here is the cute star blocks we're going to do. And they're really fun, basic sawtooth stars. So let's get started on making these. And I am going to make up one today with, um, I fussy cut a cute little gray camper. This one is kind of similar to our camper 
needle minder because she's got a little crow on the top side. <laughs> so, and then I'm also using the um, black and orange stripe for my star points. So what you want to do is for your star points, oh, and I did want to talk a little bit about my background. This is a print in the Haunted Adventure collection. It's just these very, very tiny little multicolor stars. So on the white background, there are gray and orange and yellow stars. And on there, this also print comes in orange and black. And on my fall in love quilt that I showed you guys for the giveaway, I used the black star print as the background. So even if you're not sewing with Haunted Adventure, this um, print makes a really, really cute background for your all of your Halloween projects. So we are using that as the background for this quilt rather than a solid. So um, you're going to want to draw a diagonal line to make your star points on your A print pieces. So And to get those star points so that they have these kind of angles so that the diagonals all kind of point in towards the center, you're just going to draw your lines with the stripes. So on the left side, which you're gonna have a hard time seeing this, y'all. On the left side, you're going to draw your line with the stripes this way. So my line goes like this. On the right side, we're gonna turn our stripes like this. So, and you can double check that they're coming out the way you want by folding them back the way they'll go. And you can see, oh yeah, okay, this is exactly what I want. So we'll draw this line with, with these stripes. Now, if you are using a different directional print or a non-directional print, you don't really have to worry about where your line is. You can draw just a diagonal line from corner to corner. So what we're gonna do is go to the machine and we are going to sew on that marked line. So let's go sew. Hey everybody. Okay, so we're at the machine. I almost sewed that to the wrong side of my fabric. I don't particularly want to do that. I would like the stars to be cute. So just to verify, here's my diagonal line. It's a little bit hard to see on this dark stripe, but I'm going to sew from with um, that on that marked line. And I found um, a reader messaged me. Can you guys see this button? Yeah. So a reader messaged me about this button on my machine. She has a Baby Lock Aria and it's very similar to the Crescendo, which is what I have. And if you click this, the foot kind of lifts a little bit for you as you go. So I'm gonna kind of show you that, but I am very, very attached to this new button and I use it all the time now. So we're going to sew. I also start my um, star points from the bottom side rather than the top corner because sometimes my machine doesn't have so much trouble with that but sometimes machines kind of have a hard time starting um, where there's no fabric underneath it and so your fabric gets kind of gumped up that's the technical term gumped up in your machine <laughs> so if you start from down here at the bottom and sew this way rather than starting this way and sewing down you're less likely to catch that fabric in your machine. So I'm just sewing on the mark line. I'm also using my laser to do that. So you can see how the foot lifts. And then if you're um, chain piecing, you can just keep going and doing them all at once. Um, I'm really, really um, thankful that someone found that for me. <laughs> so I've sewn on that mark line. Now we're gonna go trim. Okay, so I have my cute little, let's turn on the iron because it's probably not on. So I have my cute board here, and you guys know I like to trim on my little mini board. It keeps it from um, messing up my cutting board. So I'm going to put my ruler so that this dashed line that is one quarter of an inch from the edge is right on that seam 
and that's going to give me a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm just going to trim that off. I do not save these little pieces. If you like to really save all of your scraps, that's totally fine. I just don't have space to store that. So now we're going to press our one corner of our star open. And we're gonna do it with an iron that's not very hot. So that's always really fun. That was my trash can. <laughs> it's super squeaky, you guys. <laughs> I'll get that fixed. <laughs> So we're gonna press this open. You can give it a little shot of starch if you like, but it's a pretty easy seam to press open. So now we're going to take the other side of the star point that we drew our other diagonal line on. We're gonna double check that our points are going the way we want them to. Okay, yes, they are. And then we're gonna sew that other side. Leona's here from North Carolina. Hello, Leona. So glad you made it to the video. So we're gonna repeat that step. We're just sewing on the marked line here. We're gonna go from the, basically the bottom to the top. <laughs> oh, we came unthreaded. So the threading is very easy on this machine. It is automatic. So if it comes undone, it's very easy to fix. I love that too. So we're just sewing on that marked line. And you can definitely chain piece these for your star points. All of your star points will be laid out this way so that these angles kind of point in towards the center of your blocks so you can chain piece them and do them all at once so it makes it a little bit faster so now we've sewn over here and we're going to go ahead and trim so let's trim I would also love it, thank you guys so much for all your comments. I would love it if you were to um, hit the like button on the video and if you are not already a subscriber, I would love it if you subscribed as well. That helps out my channel a ton. So now we've trimmed just like we did on the other side and we are going to press. I love how this diagonal line makes these star points. It's so cute and it's very eye-catching, I feel like they really point in towards the center of the block and um, accent those fussy cut little campers that we have. So now we're gonna put together our darling block. So this is our little star block. It has a star point on each side. And you can see they're all the same. So that makes it really easy to um, piece them. You don't have to worry about directional fabrics, you know, that are sideways or anything like that. And then there is a background piece. These are the E background pieces. All the measurements are in the pattern. You do have to purchase the pattern to sew along, but all the measurements are in there for you. And so we have a little background piece in each corner. So now we're going to take this over to the machine and we are going to sew up our star blocks. I'm going to transfer to my little backing board here because it makes it a whole lot easier to carry our pieces. So I'm just going to get into the habit of going back and forth with our cute board. <laughs> and I like to lay out my blocks ahead of time before sewing, even if it's a simple um, block like this because it makes sure that you have everything facing the same way and that you're happy with your fabric layout. So it's just a really good habit practice to get into. <clears throat> Dawn says she loves it with the fussy cut campers. Oh yay Dawn! And Leona said the striped points would be very cute for the kitty ears too. Love that Leona! That's so fun. 
So what we're going to do is we are going to sew this together and I am going to kind of web piece this together. So I am going to move two of these pieces for each row over here. And then I am going to have these pieces here. So I'm going to take the second piece in row one and I'm going to place it right sides together with the first piece from row one. And I am going to sew those together. And then I'm not going to cut my threads. And if you guys have sewn with me before, you know I like to use this method when I'm sewing together um, blocks a lot because it keeps all my pieces tidy. So now we're gonna take that center piece and we're gonna move it over onto our star block. And you can see my foot lifted up there and it makes it really easy to do these little webbed pieced um, blocks as well. So um, there's the middle row, again, not cutting. And then I'm going to do the last piece here. And it also helpful, as soon as I stop my foot, I can, it lifts and I can um, tuck those seam allowances underneath my uh, presser foot really easily as well. So now these are all sewn. You can see they're held together and we're gonna open them back up so that we can sew those last column of blocks on. So I'm gonna grab this one and just repeat that process all the way down and then our block will be all kind of webbed piece together. Each row will be sewn. And then all we have to do is sew the rows together, which is very fun and easy. And we don't have to worry about our star points being upside down because we've all done that, right? <laughs> Gotten our, our points upside down and then had some time with our seam rippers, which is never any fun. Okay, so this is the last uh, block in the row, the little pe pe last piece in the row. And that is all there is to sewing that star block together. Once um, you have these all in place, then we're going to sew the rows together. So that is fun and easy, right? Let's go um, press. Okay, so here again is our, our, our rows. And oh, it's getting cloudy up. We're getting dark in here, you guys. <laughs> Ruth says she's new to sew alongs and loving them. Yay, Ruth, I'm so glad. Okay, so we're going to turn this over and um, bring our iron over here a little bit. So we are going to press these seams opposite so that they nest together nicely. So. On the top and bottom rows, we are going to press those seams out. And then in the center row, we will press them in. So that when we go to sew them all together, they uh, nest together beautifully and lay nice and pretty. So I like to press on the wrong side, get everything going the way I want. Then I flip over my block and I give it a little shot with a light spray starch I use. This is the flatter brand, but you can use whatever you'd like. And then you make sure that everything is nice and flat. Hence the name flatter. <laughs> so, oh, I moved out of the camera, you guys. So this is how I press on the back side, on the reverse side and on the front side and it just helps keep those blocks nice and flat. So doesn't that look great already? So now all we have to do is flip our rows over and sew along the top and bottom seams. And so we're gonna go do that. So this is not too hard to kind of line up your seams. I'm using my thumb and forefinger to make sure that those seams are nested together. If you would like and you feel like it would keep the block a little bit more secure, 
you can run a pin through there. Depending upon your pins, if you have like a magic pin, you can sew over those. I tend to not sew over pins, so I will pull them out when I get to them. So I'm just going to piece this together. And I've gotten to that pin, so I'm going to shimmy it out of the way. So while I'm sewing these seams, I would love to know if you guys have done a lot of Halloween quilts. Until I had my Halloween collection, I did not have, I think I had one Halloween fall quilt, which I feel like is pretty sad because fall is my favorite season. So you would think that I ha would have a bajillion <laughs> fall quilts, but I don't. So I would like to know if you guys have a lot of fall or Halloween quilts. So there is our first cute row. We're going to do the exact same thing on this side and we are going to nest those seams nicely. Um, you can really feel with your um, fingers if they're right up against each other, which is what we want, because that's what allows that seam to be so pretty. Okay, so let's hear about your Halloween or fall quilts. Do you guys have a lot? Do you have just one or two? Will this be your first? <laughs> I love it. Let's let me know. And if you want to, in fact, I'll post a little post in the in the my Facebook group after the video and ask people to share their fall and Halloween quilts. And so you can share photos of them if you would like to in the group. If you are not a member of my Facebook group, I have it linked at the bottom of the video description. It's called the Flamingo Toes Stitch and Share Club, and it is a very, very fun group. Okay, now we have our cute star block. We have pieced it all together. It's all um, going the right direction because we did that web piecing and our cute little design is centered. <laughs> so let's go press that. Okay, so again, we're going to press on the wrong side and then we will press on the front side. And so with these, you're going to press the seams out. And if you're feeling like your star points, your center star points aren't playing along well with the others, <laughs> and they're not, um, if they're feeling bulky, feel free to press those seams open if you would like. It's 100% up to you. It won't hurt anything to press them open. So we're going to just give this a little press. And then we have these very, very cute star blocks. Aren't these fun? And they're so easy to do. Here we go. <laughs> so Michelle says she hasn't done any um, Halloween quilts yet. Um, Karen says she's made lots of fall and Halloween pillows, but not quilts. This is the year for your first Halloween quilt. Yay, Karen! Uh, Val has um, a few. Lindy says she hasn't done any yet. Christmas ones though, okay. And Dawn says she likes Halloween quilts with cats. Love it, Dawn. Have you checked out um, Amanda, Jedi Craft Girl? She has several Halloween quilts with cats that are so cute. Uh, Wendy says no Halloween quits, quilts yet. Once she can see again, this will be her first. Yay, Wendy. Hope you're okay. <laughs> Pam's done a couple. Christine says three different ones. And Deneen says not yet. Aw, thanks, Deneen. All right, you guys. I'll keep reading those as I go to sew. But I want to um, get on, on to our cute. So here's our star blocks. Again, you're going to need four of these. And then you also need a moon block, which is this block. So this is very simple. What we're going to do for our moon block, we're gonna press it first because it's been folded up on the counter and there's a nice crease in the moon. <laughs> we can't have that. So here's our moon and we're going to take the F background pieces and we're going to um, draw a line diagonally on corner to corner on our background pieces. So we're just gonna zip through those real quick. If you do have the laser on your, compu your computer, your, your sewing machine, you don't need to do that. But 
most of us don't have a laser, so we're just going to do it this way. And what we're doing is we're sewing on these marked lines. This is, um, this is called, whoa, that was crazy. We, this is called a stitch and flip or a snowball or um, I think there's a third name for these. I can't remember off the top of my head. But that is the basic effect here. We're not making half square triangles or anything like that. We're sewing on the marked lines. So you're gonna place a background piece on each corner of your cute moon, and you're gonna sew on the marked lines. So our marked lines go like this, if you can't see them very well. So I'm gonna take this over to the machine, and we're gonna sew on all four of these. Because these don't overlap, you can do them all at once, and you're only doing one of these little moon blocks, so it's very, very fast. <laughs> So we're just going to start with uh, one corner here and I'm gonna sew on the marked line and then I will cut the threads and go to the next one because we're not doing any chain piecing and so it just doesn't make sense to not clip them. So the biggest key to a good snowball or stitch and flip corner is to make sure that your fabrics are lined up as best as you can, as perfect as you can, because then once you flip them over, you will still have the same size block and it will lay correctly. For instance, if this was a six inch square, which it's not, you would still want your square once you're done to be six inches, if that makes sense. I'm looking at the camera like you can see me, but you can't, you can't see my face. Sorry about that. <laughs> So we're gonna sew on that marked line and we're just going corner to corner here. I'm using my laser as a guide. Anita says she has a Halloween, oh, floppy corners or flippy corners, flippy corners. <laughs> yes, same concept. Flippy is a little bit more fun, I like that. So Anita says she has one with a cat silhouette quilt at applique and one with a vintage trick-or-treat children and one made with pieced cat faces, a fall one with a couple of quail in the center at last year's sew along at Backwater Shop. Well, those sound so pretty, Anita. I love that. My folks used to live in Arizona and they had a ton of quail at their house all the time. I think they miss them now that they've moved here to Tennessee. Um, and we loved sitting in their house or in their backyard and watching the quail and all the little quail babies run around. That was one of my favorite things about being in Arizona was all the cute quail out of their house. Roxana says she can't make to make this one very cute pattern, Bev. Thank you. Thanks, Roxana. Yay! Okay, so here is our seams. We've sewn all of our corners on. Now we're going to take this over to our cutting mat and trim off those corners. Here's our cute moon in progress. So we're just going to take each corner and we're doing our dashed line on there so that we have the ruler extending a quarter of an inch past the seam and we're just going to trim each one off. And there really isn't a super shortcut method of this um, because you have to do each one at a time, but that's okay because we're only doing one block and these little corners don't take hardly any time to trim off. There we go. And now our moon is all trimmed up and we can press it. Let's move the wool mat back over. And now we can press. And we can hit this with a little shot of starch too, just to give, oops, just to give our, our points and so they lay nice and flat. I have some little threads here. So there is our very, very cute little moon and our star blocks. So once we um, have all of our 
star blocks done. I haven't got four of them, but we're gonna pretend that I do. Then you're going to use your sashing pieces, which are your G and H pieces, and you are going to put your row together. So your row will start with one star, then your moon, and then you will do three more stars, which you can't see here, but you get the gist. There will be sashing pieces between each one and a sashing piece on the end. So the H pieces which go on each end are a little bit smaller in width than the G pieces and that is because we want our rows to end up all the same size or as close to all the same size as we can get them. We'll talk about our row lengths as we go along and um, but if your rows are coming out slightly off as you're sewing them up, don't freak out. We'll talk about that at the end when we go to assemble. This is, this is a very easy fix. So we will, um, so make sure you pay attention to where your H and G sashing pieces go between your blocks. So that is my biggest tip for this week. And those are our blocks for this week. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed sewing up the moon and star blocks. I would love to see them. You can share them on Instagram and you can use the spooky lane, is it S-A-L? S-A-L. <laughs> Spooky Lane Quilt S-A-L. It's on our schedule. Let's look at our schedule. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, Spooky Lane Quilt S-A-L. That's the hashtag for this quilt. Uh, sew along and then just Spooky Lane Quilt. And um, if you want to share your progress, that would be awesome. We would love that. You can also share your photos in the Flamingo Toe Stitch and Share Club. We would love to see them so we can cheer you on. Um... <laughs> that sounded so weird. So we can cheer you on. Um, this week we did our moon and star. Next week we will do those really cute wide churn dash rows. So next Monday we're going to do another easy peasy block. Those little churn dash blocks are fun and simple to do. And we only have to do five of those as well. So they're really cute. And you can get creative. I'm going to have some ideas for things that you can put in the middle of your churn dashes if you would like. <laughs> so that is um, our blocks for the week. I hope you guys have a fabulous week. I hope if you're having storms that you guys stay safe and everything's great. I will see you next Monday for our churn dash rose. Make sure you check out my blog tomorrow for my finished evergreen quilt. And I will see you guys next week. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you all have a fabulous week. Bye everybody.